if we had like eight fingers, like cartoon characters, right? Four on each hand. Then eight would be then our eight unit. Eight would be of... the like the the metric system would be in eights and However, not tens. However. Right? Tens do multiply nicely. A lot easier, right? Like, what's seven times? So thank times God we seven. have five fingers yeah. on each hand. Yeah, literally, thank God. <laughs> Welcome to Oddball. I'm Amino Hassan. And sitting in studio, the same studio. Look, see? Look, we're in the same. Right. Well, I think yeah. they're on the wide yeah. anyway. Okay. But Either way. Charlotte Wilder. Woohoo! Yeah. In Miami. In Miami. I gotta tell you, it's a lot nicer coming here in November than July or August. I'll alert the tourism board. Tell them. We were in Miami because we went to Heat Bucks last night. In season tournament fever, descended on South Florida. Charlotte. Yes. Are you running a temperature? Yeah. Oh man, I had a hundred and three in there. I mean, no. Um, I thought I thought it was really fun. I thought it was really fun. A, a few takeaways. Okay. Um, one court, not as bright as it is on TV. Mm -hmm. I like it in person. Mm -hmm. I actually liked it in person. I was like, oh, it feels fun. It feels different. It feels sort of exciting. Zhuzhes it up a little bit. Um, the golden oldies, the the heat dancers yes. who are so That's old. number two on the number list. Number two. Love number them. one, love the courts. Number, number three, two. Uh, felt like a playoff atmosphere people got i don't know if heat games are always like that in november but it felt like people were really really into this i think it didn't hurt that the team despite not having obviously tyler hero or jimmy butler mm -hmm. last night them being competitive having a chance to win right all across the league this was happening I, I told you yeah when i went you know downstairs and i saw an actual tv the turner broadcast had basically the march madness thing where it's like you've got the game but then you've got at the top, all the different the scores. The little score bugs. That, oh, yeah. yeah. And all across the league, people were scoreboard watching because mm -hmm. they knew they had to hit certain numbers. So for the Heat last night, it wasn't enough for them to just win. Because the Knicks were winning by so much against Charlotte, the Heat needed to win by a lot as well. Right. And so I don't know if the Heat knew it, but you and I knew it. Like in the fourth quarter when they were still up two or whatever, I'm like, they're not. They're They're out. They're out because they're not going to make it up on differential. Right, and the only thing that they were playing for was to stop Milwaukee yes. from getting there. And they were still playing very hard. Yeah. Uh, I do also have one thing to say about heat culture. Mm -hmm. The You know the, the culture court and the thing they had on the uh, underneath yeah. the scores? So they, didn't, they, didn't ha they didn't have it they on the court because it's not the culture court, but... All around the arena, yes. the LED ribbons and the uh, courtside signage, they did have the roughest, toughest, coarsest. Rope. Nastiest team yeah, in the that, NBA. Yeah. And and I, I said this to you last night. I was looking at that, and it was pissing me off. And I wasn't even playing. And I was like, if I were a visiting team, like, sure, it might be great for the Heat, but if I were a visiting team, and I came in there and I saw that, I was like, oh, I want to win so much more now. You got your nastiest team in the NBA. I'll, I would go off every time I came to Miami because it would piss me off so I'll much. I'll show you. Yeah. Who's nasty now? That's, yeah. what, that's what Damian Lillard said when he hit that three off that yeah. offensive rebound. Yeah, and then at the after the game, Bam hugs him, and he's like, you can still come yeah. here. That, that's a tough one because you want, if you're the Heat, part of it is not just beating the Bucks yeah. without your two of your best players. Also, there's a level of, Dame, it's not too high. It's, it seems like there's trouble in paradise over there. That's yeah. what you want to do, what you want to deliver. Unfortunately, Damian Lillard was Damian Lillard, and Giannis was Giannis, and... And they end up winning. Uh, so we have our in-season tournament teams set. Yes. The Knicks are going to play the Bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this, this should be fun. In Milwaukee, right? Yep. You got the Celtics and you got the Magic. Remember, the Magic put yeah. a whooping on the Celtics a couple of weeks ago. And, and then out west, we had a great game last night between the Kings and the Warriors. The Warriors needed to win by 12. Mm -hmm. They were up 24 at one point, I believe. And then they gave it all back. So the Kings come back. They actually end up winning the game outright. They move on. The Warriors are out. So we got Lakers, Suns in the one West quarterfinal. Mm -hmm. The other West quarterfinal is Kings, Kings and Pelicans. There you go. I knew I could get you there. You got eventually. there. Yeah. You got there. So yeah. So we've got we've got our things set right now. Now one of the big things: the Celtics, who started the night with a plus zero differential. Remember the tiebreakers are the point differential. Yeah. So the Celtics needed to win big in order to ensure that they would make it in over some of the other 3-1 and one teams in the East. So they, And looking at that, 
heading into the night, you're like, mm. oh, well, they're sort of out because it's a, there's zero point differential. Some teams yeah. have, you know, the Knicks were up like teams 27. Were, yeah. like Th- Teams were, were starting at plus 18, yeah, plus exactly. 11, things yeah. like that. It just seemed like a lot to overcome, except they're playing the Chicago Bulls, who are mm. terrible. <laughs> and on top of that, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan both leave early with injuries. The Bulls end up blowing them out, but... In the middle of a blowout, Charlotte, we saw something we have never seen in the history of basketball. We sure did. We saw the Celtics intentionally fouling Andre Drummond, the hack shack to send him to the line so they could keep running up the score. A move that was so egregious, Charlotte, that Joe Mazzulla actually had to, like, <laughs> beckon over to Billy Donovan, head coach of the Bulls. And, like, basically explain to him what was happening. Yeah, he was like, we just need this if we're going to make it. And Billy sort of, you can see him walk away and be like, okay. But, I mean, Andre Drummond was one for six yep. when they did that. That's got to feel really bad. I get it. But also, it was interesting to me. Like, afterwards, players were saying it felt weird. Yeah. They talk about the integrity of the game. Yeah. But we've seen a lot of blowouts already mm-hmm. this year. Uh, I think there was something about doing it so obviously as mm. to foul a player when you are up double digits feels like that's not. Charlotte, you, you, you want to do so, you want to maintain the integrity of the game. I, <laughs> this is how. how. How about you don't lose? They lost to Orlando. They got blown out by Orlando. That's why they're in the position where they had to do that. Wow. If they okay. just lost normally to Orlando, they probably wouldn't need to do that. If they had beaten Orlando, they definitely wouldn't need to do that. Right. They did it because of the position they were in. Every time people want to talk about integrity or whatever, I'm like, how about you don't fuck up? And then you won't have to worry <laughs> about integrity and things like that. Well, that's why I feel. Anytime integrity of the game is entered into a conversation, it's like, well, you've already lost me because this is sports and it's not like we're the moral arbiters of much. So maybe there's something else going on here. But I do think the fact that, I mean, the most read story on ESPN today is that the players feel weird about the point differential thing in the in-season tournament in a, in a NFL sort of crunch time. So I feel like there is an element of this. I mean, first of all, I like it. I'm having fun watching the in-season tournament. Mm-hmm. I think it adds, it does add stakes to games that, didn't have them and I think players are playing really hard and and they're they're doing it they are fit they're still fouling and they might feel weird about it but they're playing the game the way it's designed at this moment so I think it's sort of I don't know if you can say if it's working or not but it feels it, it's so the, the TV numbers have been up and down like yeah. it's there's nothing I think definitive that tells you Yes, it's working. No, it's not working. Obviously, I think league people will say wait till we get to Vegas and then right. judge it. Uh, because there's more of a spectacle of being on a neutral court and, and you know, all the other theatrics that come along with who's going to be the first one to win this thing. But certainly from a competitive standpoint, the games have been more competitive, mm-hmm. even the blowouts. People are playing hard through a blowout, as you saw. And then the other thing is the crowd seem to be into it. And Very. I think that's, that's all you could ask for yeah. for the league. Like, you, you have to believe if the game's feel like there's an extra kick to it. If the crowd is into it, then, hell, like, the ratings will, will come yeah, along at some point. you've already won. Yeah. Congrats to Adam Silver. Charlotte, yes. in-season tournament fever aside, mm-hmm. before the game started, we got, I would say, earth-chattering news. Yeah. Mark Cuban has agreed to sell a majority stake in the Dallas Mavericks in one of the most unconventional transactions ever. Right. He sells a majority stake, but as part of these terms of the sale, he gets to maintain complete control of basketball operations. How did right? How does that? How is that possible? Okay, so there, there's. It, this you is, put it in a contract, and all of a sudden anything's possible. It's like yeah, first Mark, of all, you, like you just you write it down. It, if right. you agree to it, right? So the way I'm thinking about because a lot of people are like, why would that be, right? He doesn't want to run marketing. He doesn't want to run the business. He just wants to do the basketball part of it, which is obviously the most fun part about owning a team, right? Yes. You don't want to do the, like, oh, my God. I'm not trying to look at a spreadsheet. I'm trying to look at plays. Yeah, well, and you might look at a spreadsheet with players on it. Maybe. But not, not like, figures or anything, unless it's salaries, and then we're good. Not terribly good at Excel. Okay. (laughs) You don't excel at Excel? I don't. Word. Oh. This is over. So. I got to leave now. So what makes this really unconventional is, mm-hmm. is like I said, the control of basketball operations without the majority ownership. Right. Why would anyone agree to that? I think, I'm not certain, you know, I know David Sampson has posited that 
the full details are not out. So probably what it is is a transition thing over the span of however many years. Sure. But I think the other explanation would be if the Adelson family who, who bought the team are literally buying it just as an investment. Well, that's what I was thinking because you've got Miriam. So Sheldon Adelson, who died 2021, um, he was a big Republican donor. Yeah. He sort of puppeted a bunch of super PACs and stuff. Mm-hmm. He owned the Las Vegas Review. Miriam, his widow, widow. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is now the one in control with her son-in-law of this f- trust or fund mm-hmm. or whatever. And I was like, you know, maybe she loves basketball. That's possible. I, I, the, the only thing I can think of is if real estate feels like it's getting weird, aside from yeah. her loving basketball, if real estate feels like it's getting weird, it's like, okay, well, what's something that will definitely appreciate in value? A sports team, let's park it there. Right. See, t- to, me, to me, if you love basketball, you don't do this deal. Right. Yeah, like, if you love basketball, like, it would be like, hey, I want to buy this new Fisher-Price toy set. I'm never going to actually play with it. I'm going to leave it here and let someone exactly. else play with it. Like that. So th- that part doesn't make sense to me unless it is exactly the other part that you said, which is it's just a store of value. Right. Now, here's the messed up part. What? All right. I think for me, this is a massive red flag that Mark Cuban is looking at the future. He's looking at the upcoming TV deal, mm-hmm. the dollars getting tighter, mm-hmm. the streamers who have had their own little comeuppance in the last, you know, 12 to 18 months where where they, once it was a rocket ship to the stars, they're like, uh, maybe we don't have as much money. Maybe we, we can't just throw money at stuff. Like, oh, the VCs want their money back. I mean, th- think about this. Amazon put in a ton of money and said, we're doing a our own fast channel Five days a week of sports programming from morning to evening before the games kick off, right? And this is going to help us promote Thursday Night Football and all the other sports initiatives we have. And within a year, Mm -hmm. that's shuttered. Yeah. So that whole streaming money that everyone's been talking about for years, like, oh, when this next TV deal is up, it doesn't even matter if Disney and Turner aren't poning up. Oh, Amazon and Netflix are going to come in and just dump billions of dollars. That's not been the case. So I think Mark Cuban's looking and he's saying, hmm. oh, this is the bubble and the bubble is about to burst. And Charlotte, it's incredibly important to note that it is Mark Cuban who's doing this and not any other owner. Do you know why? Because. Because do you know how Mark Cuban became a billionaire? By shorting stuff? Broadcast.com. He founded this thing called Broadcast.com. They pioneered the technology that allows people to stream video on the Internet. The reason why you're able to watch anything on your phone, tablet, or computer is because Mark Cuban and the company that he founded. He founded it, and he sold it, and within a few months, the dot-com bubble crashed, and that he made out like a bandit, and everybody else was like Pets.com. Like, ah, we're broke. <laughs> Which, by the way, I still don't know why Pets.com went under. Like, it was a good idea. It I was mean, just ahead of its time. Look at Chewy. There you go. It's a, it was ahead of its time. Yeah. I, I definitely, to me, it feels like the ship be sinking mm-hmm. and let me get off before everyone starts to figure it out and clamor. Because even like Shark Tank, if you think about it, it's like, all right, whenever this deal is done, the next deal, again, TV isn't what it was when that show debuted. Do I want to keep working to make less or can I just live off of residuals and, and, uh, and, like of the reruns, the uh, what do they call that? The uh, residuals. Sy- yeah, syndication. Syndication. Syndi- syndication residuals, right? I don't have to do the work anymore. I can, and now I can just do this thing. Right. He's like my the generations of my family until the world ends are going to be fine. So no, I think they were. <laughs> Spoiler that, alert! No, I think I mean. the Cuban family that's, was going to be. But fine. But that's what I mean. It's like at right. a certain point, he's decided where his threshold is. Right. Perhaps unless there's the next thing he's going to get into that we don't know yet. But I. Oh man, are we on the ship? Are we sinking? No, we're, we're not. We're not. We're, we're not on the ship. No, because we're on the other ship, the gambling ship. Oh, oh I like and the gambling's going up. Gambling's baby. good. That ain't going to stop. We're going to keep throwing money at games and parlays and DraftKings Sportsbook. Check code it out. Promo code LAF. LAF. And that is a live read that didn't even pay me for. It's not Monday, it's not Tuesday, it's not Thursday, it's not Friday. We don't do shows on Monday, so I don't even know why I brought up Monday. It's Tuesday, it was Thursday, it's Friday, it's not one of those, it's Wednesday. 
And as you can see on Wednesdays, Charlotte has her dukes up mm -hmm. like the Notre Dame mascot because it's Word Count Wednesday. Charlotte, your first question. Yeah. LeBron James became the first player in NBA history to score 39,000 points mm -hmm. and pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar once again for most all-time minutes played with more than 66,300. Do you think LeBron will hit 40,000 points? And can you see anyone currently surpassing him in either record? Yes, he'll hit 40. No one currently will surpass him. On the all-time scorers list, the closest currently playing player to LeBron James is Kevin Durant at mm -hmm. 11th. And sure, we don't know what's going to happen. Like, if Victor Wembanyama turns out to be LeBron James, maybe he's the one who shoots up that ladder. But mm -hmm. for now, I think, look, if he's played 21 seasons and he's already got 39,000 points, that is almost, that's like one, that's like 1,500 points a season. Why wouldn't he get to 40? I mean, just the idea that you're going to play that long. Like, I think that's the craziest thing about LeBron is that this is year 21. Right. And... It, Unlike every other player who at, you know, past year 15 or whatever starts to kind of gradually decline, he seems to be scoring at the same rate. He seems to be scoring at an efficiency that he didn't have earlier in his career. And actually, we were talking about this yesterday. Yeah. Do you think anyone's going to catch him? No. All right. How bad is the situation in Chicago for Zach Levine right now? And what should happen next? Uh, it's pretty bad. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Right? Chicago honestly should go fire sale. I look at the Bulls. This is not a good basketball team. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, these guys don't appear to be completely bought in. I watched the Bulls a couple of times recently over the last week. Even in the games they win, they don't seem to be totally engaged. Mm -hmm. I think you look at DeRozan's got an opt-out at the end of the year. Caruso, Patrick Williams is going to be a restricted free agent at the end of the year. And then Levine, who clearly doesn't want to be there, but has some money and years left on his deal. I think this is the time, if you're the Chicago Bulls, you start shopping and, and starting over. because Right now. This, you start yeah, over right now. This, yeah. this not working. Right. Like It's not just, hey, we're trying. We just seem to be on the short end of the stick every night. Yeah. This is, it's not working. And then here's the thing. Chicago, as an organization, has a history of waiting too long. Yep. Of not trading at the right time because they keep lying to themselves. So... I think this is one of those situations where the writing's on the wall. You can either be honest and get a head start on whatever's next, or you can continue to lie to yourself yeah. and then be behind the eight ball. All right, question number two, Charlotte. The Detroit Pistons have lost 14 straight games, which is a franchise, ties a franchise record, and their next eight opponents are 500 or better. How much worse will it get? And how can they turn around their season? Their it's next gonna years. get a lot worse. Oh man. Turn around next year. I feel like at this point, I mean you have Kate if you ne next year? Just the, like keep trying. Keep trying and then do something to fit that they, they have such good young players, but you have someone like Cade Cunningham, their star, being like, we're bad. And Monty Williams being like, I'm very frustrated with all of you. This is not Detroit basketball, this is not Pistons basketball. We're not trying. Right now, they need to hope that they can bank on being young and still having time to gel because otherwise you're going to need, like, a lot of players-only meetings. They have a roster of guys who cannot shoot. That's unfortunate Their best shooter is, for a basketball team. Is is a rookie, is, is Marcus Sasser, I think. So, yeah, you, you, without shooting, this none of this is going to work at you, all. You have to make baskets to win. Yeah. <laughs> it's novel, a novel concept. Uh, okay, I mean, what will be the biggest reason for why Tyrese Halliburton doesn't win MVP this season? Now, in his fourth year, he is a league leader in assists. Mm -hmm. He's averaging more than 20 points per game. No one in history has put up. Wait, 20, 20 yeah, points per 20, game. 2010 with 50, 2010, 40, 90 shooting. Yeah. The Pacers won't win enough games. Like, in order to be MVP, historically... You have to have basically a top three record in your conference at mm -hmm. least and above 50 wins, right? Russell Westbrook did it in Oklahoma City as a sixth seed. They won 45, 46 wins. Yeah. But he, had, he was he, undeniable. He did that, something right. that historically we thought we'd never see. We thought we would never see another man 
average a triple double for a season after Oscar Robertson did it in the 60s. Some people came close over the years, and then Russ did it, and we were like, whoa. And, you know, as time has gone by, now we look back, we're like, oh, yeah, the game has changed, the personnel have changed, the way the game is played. It makes it a lot more uh, conducive for triple doubles. Mm -hmm. That's not to take anything away from Russ because he's the one who did it. Right. But there's definitely a new era here. So him doing something historic led to him winning that MVP over a very deserving James Harden that year in Houston. Now, where we are with with um, with Halliburton, while this is a historic line, 2010, 50, 40, 90, it's not, it doesn't roll off the tongue like triple-double. Yeah. Like, people know what a triple-double is. You say 50, 40, 90, I don't know if the casual fan is like, oh, yeah, that's pretty tough to do at those levels. And, and even 50, 40, 90, up until... 10 years ago or 15 years ago was a rarity. It was like Bird did it a couple of times. Steve Nash did it a couple of times. And then all of a sudden you got Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. All these people are doing it. But no one's done it with this many assists per game as well. Right. Halliburton basically is is an, a reincarnation of Steve Nash in that way, in that, except with more offense. So it's exciting. It's fresh. It, it is is definitely something that I think everyone should be tuning in to watch. At the same time, they don't defend. Mm-hmm. They lose silly games like they did to the Blazers the other night. And that's the stuff that's going to get in the way of an MVP campaign. In the same way that Shea Gildas Alexander last year was MVP caliber, but the Thunder were what the Thunder were. And yeah. now this year, he gets to have an actual MVP campaign. All right. Well, sorry, Tyrese. Tell your team to be better. Next year. Next year. Next year. Charlotte, your yes. last question. Yeah. What do you see as more likely and why? LaMelo Ball as championship winning all-star or forever plagued with injury and barely sniffs the first round of the playoffs just like your brother. <laughs> 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 Is that a Star Wars? That's the basketball gods. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Because his brother yeah. is forever injured. I mean, more likely injuries, hate to say it. Um, he hurt the same ankle he had surgery on last season. Mm-hmm. Um, there's an aura about him of maybe bad luck. That is me completely. Uh, about that family. About the, yeah, well, right. Not about you him, look, about that family. And, and it's hard to look at, you know, it's hard to look at Lonzo. It's hard to look at Lamelo and be like, "Oh, this isn't a pattern." At this point, it is. It is a pattern. I feel like the Ball family got to the NBA, and that was the. Everything went wrong when Lavar stopped talking. No. Oh. When he was talking, everything was great. Everyone was doing great. When he stopped talking, that's when everyone started getting hurt and all the. Dis- and that's when women started talking about sports even more. Oh my God. Who would I'm, want that? Stay in your lane. I miss him. Uh, will Darren Fox bring the Sacramento Kings their first championship? And what's the missing piece that will get them there? Oh, you want to see it? Watch this. Oh, I'm going to answer the second part first. Oh, no rules against that. No need for second piece. They're, win- they're winning the NBA Cup. Oh. Oh, that's right. Oh. Great. Gentlemen, in season tournament championship, book it. Sacramento versus New York. Two franchises with so much ineptitude in their recent history. Two franchises with fan bases that are so entitled for God knows why. And the one trophy that will set them apart and let them beat their chest for the rest of the year. Oh, what about that one? How oh, you like the look of that? I mean, this is the best case scenario for the league, though, because now if if the, listen, yeah. if the Kings or the Knicks win the in-season tournament, the NBA Cup, their fans, are, it, it will then mean something to their fans. Their fans, even if they say they won't, even if they say they won't, their fans will be like, we won the in-season tournament. It rolls around next year. Yep. They are all in. Because those two teams that, are not winning the finals, not probably. That, we won the first in-season tournament. They're going to hang a banner. Like, sorry, Celtics. I know you like Tatum and you guys are like, oh, they're so awesome or whatever. Sorry, Lakers. I know LeBron wants to win everything out there. Sorry, Suns and, and Pelicans. It's nice that you guys showed up and you gave it your all. But when I'm telling you, the Kings and the Knicks are like, how much? My firstborn? <laughs> what else do I have to sacrifice? Just give me something that I can lord over people as success. 
Did you see that game last night? Yeah. They lost it. I was waiting for Patrick Beverly to run out from the rap, from the back and stand on the score table, take his jersey off. He didn't <laughs> even play for the Kings, but like that's the energy that they have. Yeah. Thanks for watching Oddball. That's all. Ah, what is that? Ah! You and I were at Heat Bucks. Mm -hmm. Damian Lillard finally made it down to South Florida. Yeah. Finally made it to the Kaseya Center. Albeit, it was so jarring. And yet, go back, Charlotte, a few months earlier. Well, I was going to say, the last time you and I were at the Kaseya Center together, mm -hmm. we were waiting for Dame. We, were wait we thought he was on his way. We thought he was coming. We taped this whole thing thinking like, oh, when he gets when here, this will be really cool to play whenever it is that happens. Because we taped this like in July. Yep. And so. Uh, so we're using the footage for something. Yeah. He's, he made it. He he's finally here. made it. So <laughs> enjoy. Got a lot of experience doing stairs from Denver. No, you're doing it wrong. Dude, they locked this out. How long does it take to fly from Portland to Miami? I mean, it's been a couple of days, right? Or has it? Multiverse. We don't know. Can Dame come out to play? Does he have to take a connecting flight? What's the deal? I don't know. You think he flew Southwest? Spirit. Dame? No. Is What's Jim, a private? Is Jimmy in there? Maybe Jimmy can open the door? Jimmy? Is it? It looks like it's Dame time. Oh. <laughs> you think Spo's around? No. How long is it going to take for Dame to get here? Should be here any minute now. Any minute now. Some hours later. Oh. Uh, is he here yet? No. Is he here yet? You just asked me he's not here yet. Hey, look, they're waving the white flag even before the season starts. Well, when's he getting here? I don't know. Why don't you know? I thought you knew everything about the NBA. Damian Lillard. Uh-huh. Jimmy Butler. Yeah. Idris Adebayo. He's not BAM yet. Okay. He's got he's to prove that he's one. He's got to earn BAM? He's got to earn it gotta back. He's got to earn his own yeah. name. You want to get something to eat? Yeah. Are they baked right. egg and cheese in Miami? 